Hey guys, welcome back to episode 3 of the Outlast camera tutorial series where we're recreating the camera system from Outlast. If you watched the first two episodes, you would have seen that we set up the night vision so that we can press N and it turns on and it counts down with the battery, slowly lowering the percentage in the top right. And we also set up some uh, functionality for the battery, but we didn't quite finish it. So in today's episode, we're going to finish it off and we're also going to do the UI elements for the battery so you can see how many batteries we have stored. So to begin that, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go make a reload system. Because at the moment we can pick up the batteries, but they don't actually do anything for us. So we're going to come into our character and then you're going to find some empty space. And we're going to make our reload system. Actually, no, we need to make the uh, the bind for it. So we're going to come into our project settings. You're going to select input. And then you're going to make another action mapping. We're going to call this one reload. I can spell. And then we're going to bind this to R. We're going to close that. And then we're going to come into our third person character. We're going to search reload. And then we're going to drag out from pressed and we're going to create a branch. And then from this branch, we're going to drag is NV on. Uh, wait, is that right? Ah. Uh, is not right. <laughs> From this one, we're gonna drag out and we're gonna get a uh, gr greater than or equal to, and then we're gonna get our NV battery storage. We're gonna drag that into the top one, and then we're gonna enter in one. So basically, what this does is it makes sure that we have more than one battery. Because if we don't have this set up, you'll just be able to reload whether you have a battery or not. So this checks to make sure that we actually have at least one battery before trying to reload. We're now going to drag out and we're going to get our NV battery storage. We're going to set that. We're going to drag it into the true. We're going to drag out from there. We're going to go minus integer. And then we're going to get NV battery storage again. We're going to drag that into the top. And what this does is that once we do have this, it will minus one battery. So that we don't have an infinite loop. And then it will go ahead and set the NV battery to whatever number you have NV battery set to. So in my case, I'm just going to enter 80. If you wanted to, you could just drag out NV battery and put it into there, but I'm not bothered. So now what this does is that whenever we press our R key, as long as we have a battery, it will reload. So I'm going to go ahead and name that. So we're going to call this reload system. Uh, I'll save that, come back out here. And now if I step on top of this thing, you can see in the top left, it says that I have one. So now if I press N, notice that it'll start counting down on the top left and my battery percentage will go down. If I now turn that off and press R, the battery will fill up. Or if you press N again and then leave it running and then press on it, you step on it so you pick up another battery and then press R, it'll fill it up. So as you can see there, we've now finished our battery functionality, but there's no way of telling when this is actually a fully released game, how many batteries we have. It's at the moment just running through the debug system, which is a development only thing. So now to set that up, we will come back into our widget blueprint and we would drag in a text. Put that on our canvas panel, find where the text is. And we'll set that as an anchor point to the top right. And then we'll reset its position. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter in 0, which is the default. We're going to set the font to 64 and the size to content it. And then I'm going to move it. Uh, there we go. I'm going to move it to negative 300. And then position Y, I'm going to put that to 16. So it comes down a little bit. So it has a bit of a margin, but it's also in line. Uh, the reason why you don't want this number to be too close to your battery is if this number becomes a double digit, then it will take up twice the space, or if it becomes three digits, it will take up three times. So if you have a problem where this number would be going a lot higher than a single digit, then I'd recommend putting it below the battery, so that won't be a problem unless it runs off your screen. But now that we have that set up, we're going to now create a bind on the text this time. We're going to create a new one. We're going to name this text. Uh, we would call this one. I can double check. Number of batteries stored. Yeah, we're gonna try again. Yeah, so there's a bit of a space for us to work with. 
We're going to do the same thing that we did last time. So we're going to cast to third person character. And I'm going to set the object to get player character. This time uh, we're going to drag out NV battery storage and we're going to turn it into a text. And that's it. That's all you have to do for that. So now when we come in here and we press play, you can see it says zero on the top. And now if I walk on top of this, it will say one. If I walk on top of this one, it will say two. And if I press N and start using up my battery, I can reload. It goes down to one and I can reload again and it goes down to zero. And now if I reload, it's not updating at all because we don't have any battery stored. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn the debug off. So to do that, you just come back into your battery and just delete this here. So we no longer need that now because we have a UI element showing us it. And then we're going to work on our zoom functionality now. So if you've played out last before, you'll know that you can zoom in and out. It has a bar at the top representing that. So to start that off, we're going to just set up the zoom functionality before we do the UI. So we're going to make the zoom in system first. To do that, we will need keybinds again. So we're going to go to our project settings. We're then going to come under input and make another action map. We're going to call this zoom in. We're going to bind it to our mouse up and we're going to create another one. We're going to call this one zoom out and this one will be bound to mouse down. Uh, there we go, mouse all down. Now we can close that. Come and try a third person character and then I am going to go ahead and call upon the zoom in function. And then whenever this is pressed, uh, we are going to create a branch to check if uh, the field of view is below a certain amount. So uh, we need to make a, a couple things. We need to make a minimum field of view. I'm going to make a float. I'm going to compile that. I'm going to make sure that it's 20. And then I will make a, another one, call this one default FOV, file that, and then set this to whatever your default field of view is. In my case, it is 90 because I haven't changed it. Uh, we need to make another one. We're going to call this one current zoom. And then we're going to leave that as default because we'll be updating that as we go on. And then for now, I'm just going to leave that as is. I'll be finishing off the rest of this in the fourth episode of this tutorial. So if you want to see that, go ahead and click the link down below in the description. I will be finishing off the zoom in functionality and we'll be finishing off the UI for it because it's fairly simple. And a lot of this one and the zoom out is just copy pasting and changing a couple things. Anyway, guys, that's all for this episode. See you next time.